Hello, hi, welcome back to uh, our latest chapter in Southampton Reviews in Cardiothoracic Surgery. In this chapter, we'll be discussing cardiopulmonary bypass. Um, supervisors for this chapter are Mr. Sonal Ori, our other cardiac surgery consultant and lead for education, Mr. Zami Miskolchi, our other cardiac surgery consultant, as well as Mr. John Bull, our lead perfusionist. To start with, as usual, as you're already uh, familiar with, we always start with the mind map or the classification or table of contents, if you'd like to call it. Most books describe this subject in terms of role pathophysiology, circuit and circuit components, um, uh, conduct and weaning, as well as emergency scenarios. I tried to fashion them in a way easy to recall, please spend a few minutes, uh, try to be familiarized with what are you studying. It's a, it's a good habit to, to have a mind map always before you tackle any subject. Otherwise, you get lost. You're not sure where or what direction are you going to. Now, this is the uh, one of the very famous diagrams uh, almost present in the beginning of every chapter of cardiopulmonary bypass in most of the books. Uh, I think it's unfair to uh, study the circuit as one block. Um, halfway through, you will get lost what is going where. Um, I think the best way to tackle it is um, uh, in a systematic manner in, uh, in, in pieces, as if you are a perfusionist setting up a, psych uh, a circuit. So naturally speaking, the circuit will always start at the heart. Um, uh, remember, cardiopulmonary bypass is uh, basically bypassing the heart and the lung function in order to achieve uh, an, um, um, uh, an um, um, bloodless still field um, to achieve an unhurried repair of the uh, cardiac pathologies. So naturally speaking, the first step is emptying the heart. So we lead blood out of through uh, from the venous side of the um, heart to the reservoir, um, where we collect uh, the blood, manipulate its uh, electrolyte and chemical composition, and um, um, this process happens in a passive manner. Um, it's uh, gravity. It's gravity. So the reservoir should naturally be located um, at a lower level than the heart. Um, allowing the blood to uh, find its way through. Um, of course, the tubing must be of a special character to allow this with least resistance. Uh, then, uh, the blood needs to go to the oxygenator. Although the oxygenator in, all, um, in almost all commercial uh, brands is uh, uh, attached or uh, in the same frame as the reservoir, however, if you check clearly, it's separate, it's disconnected, they are not in continuity. The blood needs a, a driving force. From this point on, uh, it's all about pumps and driving forces. Um, gravity only to lead blood out of the heart. However, from this point on, it, there must be a pump driving the blood. So the first pump we'll come across here is the main head pump or the systemic blood pump, which drives the blood from the reservoir to the oxygenator. As I said, they are not in continuity. Uh, as a matter of fact, later on in this chapter, uh, one of the maneuvers is to separate the oxygenator from the reservoir. We'll be discussing that in the emergency scenarios. So the main head pump drives the blood from the reservoir to oxygenator where it gets oxygenated. This is the lungs function, the gas exchange. Hence, we are substituting now the lung function. This blood is then returned back to the heart, uh, actually to the body. It returns back to the first point of systemic circulation, which is in this situation, in this diagram, the ascending aorta, excluding one branch of the aorta, which is the coronary arteries. So the blood oxygenated, the good, nice systemic blood will return back to the body. However, the heart will receive, will be ischemic the, um, um, by putting the cross clamp. And we discuss that in details in the myocardial protection section. This is the first part of the circuit. The second part is the cardioplegia. Um, uh, this is one of the uh, common fashions in, in situation where we are giving blood cardioplegia. Of course, there are various uh, ways of setting it up, but this is one of the very common uh, ways. Um, in, in a situation where you're giving blood cardioplegia, so you lead blood from the uh, oxygenator to the cardioplegia uh, circuit, uh, pump, sorry, and uh, um, a cardioplegic solution provides the, uh, the cardioplegia part of it in a four to one fashion. This is achieved by the fact that the tube size um, um, difference between the uh, the blood to cardioplegia is four to one. So the tube leading blood into the uh, pump is four times bigger than the tube uh, leading uh, cardioplegia solution. Hence, every revolution will give you four parts of blood to one part of cardioplegia. This is obviously before returning back to the heart is manipulated in terms of pressure and temperature and then returns back to the aorta. 
aortic root. This is the type of blood which goes to the heart. So the body gets uh, the body gets the systemic, nice, good oxygenated blood, hypokalemic or normal kalemic, and the blood gets the uh, the heart. Sorry, gets the uh, um, blood f uh, rich enriched with cardioplegia, and that goes to the aortic root. And both compartments are separated by the cross clamp. This is the second uh, part of the circuit. Next is uh, the uh, um, vents and suckers. Uh, both vents and suckers uh, uh, withdraw blood from the field or from the heart back to the reservoir. But what's the difference between both? The difference of function. Vents are meant to draw blood from inside the heart back to the reservoir in order to decompress the heart. It's a protective uh, maneuver uh, and used also during the airing process. However, the suckers are meant to drive blood from the surgical field um, uh, to the um, to the reservoir in a function of uh, protecting uh, the patient from blood loss and also achieving um, a, a visu good visualization. But both of them essentially draw blood from the surgical field back to the pump. Finally, the fourth and last uh, part of the circuit is the modulation part of the uh, uh, oxygenator. Uh, this is includes the heater cooler machine which rewarms and um, creates a hypothermic effect as well as the oxygen and air supply, gas supply, along with a few filters. Uh, it is important here to note that the positions and sequence of uh, um, parts of this circuit is extremely crucial. Uh, for instance, the the reservoir needs to be at a lower level than the heart. We already mentioned that. Otherwise, you will not receive venous return. For instance, also, the oxygenator and the heater cooler or the heat exchanger um, uh, needs to be in uh, the heat exchanger must always be upstream to the oxygenator. You warm or, or, or you heat the blood before it gets fully saturated with oxygen. Why is that? Boils low simply because if you warm blood um, saturated with oxygen you are more likely to create micro bubbles and extract uh, oxygen bubbles out uh, or gas out of the blood and create micro emboli hence the heat exchanger is always upstream it you heat desaturated blood not saturated blood uh, another point of importance in the hierarchy of this uh, circuit is for instance the position and direction of the vents uh, it's not unheard of wrong alignment or wrong connection of the vents can kill a patient simply because the vent is meant to draw blood from the surgical field to the reservoir remember the top part of the reservoir is air so imagine if you put it in the up in the other direction so the su uh, circuit uh, rotating the other way so you're drawing air from the top of the level in the reservoir back to the heart you're pumping air into the heart and it's not unheard of patients dying because of wrong um, um, wrong setup uh, hence one of the safety checks of uh, bypass machines is always checking the suckers are in the proper orientation and proper direction before you um, uh, complete your circuit. Uh, just to put a few labels on the pictures, as you can see, the main uh, head circuit uh, in starts with the venous cannula, venous line, then the reservoir and oxygenator. As we go, there are always safety adjuncts to protect the circuit from uh, unintentional uh, 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 faults. For instance, there is a level detector. Once the level falls below that, the pump automatically shuts. Um, then we have the systemic blood pump arterial line. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the blood returns back to the uh, first point of systemic circulation by via the aortic cannula. In this situation, it's the ascending aorta. Then we have the cardioplegia circuit. As you can see here, the cardioplegic solution is uh, um, is hanged on top of the uh, heart-lung machine, uh, giving a 4 to 1 ratio, uh, manipulated in terms of pressure and temperature, then returning back to the aortic root, the proximal part of the uh, cross clamp uh, via the root cannula. Again, safety adjuncts here, arterial line uh, filter and bubble trap, vents, sucker, heater, cooler machine, gas and air. All right. Um, this is in brief the circuit. I will leave you now with this MCQ to test your knowledge and um, we'll carry on with the next uh, discipline, which is the role of cardiopulmonary bypass. Thank you.